Okay, hello. So we are here at the White Wolf Wellness Foundation, um, just near uh, Bakersfield, California, and um, we are starting to build a cob oven. Okay, so this is the the first day here. So um, I just thought I would show you the process of how um, we're doing it. There's lots of different ways of doing a cob oven, and I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it. So first of all, um, I did I did the base. So I just got regular, you know, eight by eight by sixteen cinder blocks and broke it um, to turn it in from an eight into a six. Just kind of broke it apart and just dry stacked those. Um, so nine, nine per row, so twenty-seven, and uh, and then just kind of put those around. So I have it so the outside perimeter is about four feet, right? Four feet across, and maybe a little bit more. And then uh, and then this from here to here is more like four and a half feet because I want it longer uh, than wide and um, and so so this judge this and then I have this little space down below that'll be for wood storage right so um, this will be for like wood storage and I'm sure the dogs will like to go in there and stuff when they eat um, so uh, so I got our cod mix here so this is just the earth right from the property um, really really good um, earth so I just mix it with some of the some of the local sand and some straw and uh, I'll just show you my, my little uh, shake test I did so this is the earth um, put into a jar and put some water in it and shook it up and so you can see the ratio of sand to clay the sand of course is heavier than the clay so it sinks to the bottom so you got sand down here it looks like about 40% sand I'd estimate 60% clay and so I add another 20-30% sand to make the final ratio about 70% sand So that's all well and good And uh, so now uh, and then we're gonna be putting stones around the bottom perimeter So I just went down to the river right here and got some stones beautiful stones And so we're gonna put these around around the bottom Right around the bottom perimeter because we don't want the cob like to be touching the ground kind of thing so we'll just be keeping the cob off the ground and it gives that you know elephant toe effect so i'll just show you so first thing i'll do is i'll be putting the cob on the inside and um and then also on the outside and once you do that then it really locks the cinder box you know into place right and uh so highly recommend knee pads so first thing you want to do is uh, that you make a clay slip. This is like the clay glue, right? So this is just like a clay milkshake kind of stuff. And uh, so you put, make this, this is like the, exactly the consistency you want, kind of thick. You just put this over the cinder box, right? And so then the, the cob will recognize the clay on the blocks and want to stick to it. All right, so you just do it like that. And then, and then you get your nice glob of cob. And you just plop it on there, and you know, about a, an inch or so, an inch or so thick. You're not so much worried about you know trying to get it smooth or anything when you get it on. You're just you're just getting it on there, slapping it on, just slapping it on, exactly, slapping it on like that. And then once you get an area covered that you feel good about, then you can dip your hands in water, and then just kind of smooth that out, right? We don't have to get it super smooth because we're going to be doing a, a plaster over this when it's all dry and that'll, that's, that'll smooth it out. So we'll go ahead and, and cover all of the, uh, the blocks with the cob and then we'll take the, the cob and just kind of go that right to the stones, right? And just kind of work, work our stones in, right? So that's just, it's a nice fact. You know, you can also, if you don't want to use cinder blocks, you can also just get a whole bunch of stones and do and make them a cement mortar and and pile those all up and that's also possible but um i, I don't mind using some, some cinder blocks um so that's that and then i'll be showing you the the next phase we'll be putting wood over this and then a ring of a couple of rings of bricks we'll put our insulation in here and then make our put our fire bricks on the floor and then build our dome up here okay so but this is phase one Okay, so we have finished putting our cob mix over our cinder blocks on the outside and the inside. So that's great. 
So you see how we you know we put the the cob. We'll probably let this set up a little bit, and then we can kind of where the, we have a big stone, we can kind of you know build this out and kind of accentuate these stones. And uh, so now I'm about to start getting home to get some two by sixes and cut those and put those on top of the um, the blocks, right? And um, and then we'll do our our ring of in, uh, bricks, and I'll, I'll show you that. So I just wanted to show you kind of how it is. So I like to do this part here before I do anything else because it's hard to access this, of course, if you have your, your board over it. So, um, okay. Okay, so we have uh, put the our board. So I'm just using like some two by sixes. I find that works great. Just put, uh, I put like, you know, eight two by sixes across here and, um, and, just put, and then I put a little bit of cob on the outside edge. And now I'm going to put some aluminum foil um, over the, the wood. Right? I'm just going to put a couple, a couple courses of aluminum foil down. And, uh, and that's just to, to give a little, the wood a little added protection, right? And um, so I'll kind of double this up probably and staple it or nail it down. And, and, then, and then we'll do our, our ring of bricks. So we'll show you that. Okay, so we have made our ring of bricks, right? So we just, I just use like regular red common brick and put two bricks around and put a little bit of cob, you know, in between and around and everything. And, uh, and so now, so this ring here is to contain our insulation, right? And I find this is a good amount. Uh, one, one brick high is just not really enough. Um, and I, I just find that, you know, using bricks around, if you have Adobe bricks, great. Um, so now we're ready to start making our insulation. So basically for the insulation, I make a clay slip like this. It's kind of a clay slurry. And then um, just make it into kind of a really thin milkshake like this. And, um, and then add uh, vermiculite. I have this vermiculite, which is like a really lightweight kind of volcanic ash you know, material. And I'll, and I'll add some sawdust to that also. So, but I think I'm going to do that in the, the mud box so that we can make a bigger batch. So, um, so that you can see here what the earth looks like. You know, this is this the raw earth that we're working with. It's, it's really nice. This is like, it, it is like gold. It is beautiful. It's really, really nice. And you see how it's a clod. You know, whenever you see a, a, a dirt clod, you pretty much know that you got good clay. And this is like a dirt clod. This is like a little mini cob ball, right? So, um... Yeah, so we'll add some water to this, make this into a clay milkshake, and then add our vermiculite, just, just so that the um, vermiculite is just barely coated in the clay. So it'll still be very lightweight, uh, have lots of air in it, but it'll be able to compact well. Okay. So. All right, so we have our insulation mix. So the insulation here, you know, again, so I made a, a clay slip, kind of a clay slurry milkshake. And then I added perlite, you know, we have, we have um, about a half a bag of perlite and, um, and then I, we added some sawdust also that we just, you know, got for free yesterday at a, at a mill. And so you can see how it is. So it's, it's, it barely forms together into a ball, right? So it's just very lightweight, so it'll compact well, but still have lots of air in it, right? And so we just take this insulation mix. And well, another thing too is you don't want to breathe in. The, the dust of vermiculite or perlite dust. You know, you want to, you know, maybe we have that dust mask or just be careful about that. So you just take this and just put that right into this space. This is where also, if you have a bunch of glass bottles, a bunch of like empty beer, soda bottles, empty glass bottles, you can put those in also. And that's often what I do. Put uh, empty glass bottles in uh, maybe like in the first course and then and then the uh, insulation on top of that, right? But um, or or this and so the whole point of course of the insulation is uh, Well a couple things one to retain the heat that's going to be in the fire brick because we want the, the floor of the oven to stay like really hot for a long time so the heat won't escape and also so it doesn't uh, heat up the the wood that we have here, right? So a good eight inches or so of insulation, um, you know, it's plenty for that. Right? Okay, so now the cod mix is going over the insulation. 
right? So this cob mix is very dense. So this is like maybe even 80% sand, 20% clay. So it's very, very dense. It'll compact really, really tight. So much so that we might even be able to actually start working on building our dome to today, right? So we just we make this really, really dense. And we, this only goes on about you know a half inch, you know, and and, uh, and we can we can have it go on the uh, the bricks on the side just a little bit also, but um, but we'll be putting a bed of sand over this also a very thin bed of sand and then setting our uh, our, our bricks for the floor um, over this. So that that's where we're at now. Okay, so uh, before we go any further, I want to just let you know kind of what we've done so far. So, we, uh, we put a very thin bed of sand over our cob floor, you know, just very thin, and then um, screeded that, got a straight edge, got that nice and flat, and then we got these bricks. We're just using red common brick. I, I've, I've certainly done it with, um, you know, the yellow fire brick. Um, those cost, you know, about two and a half times more than the red brick. And I found that the red brick works just fine for, for a floor of an oven. Um, you can even do a dense cob floor. I've just done a full-on cob floor, too, and got that smooth and used that. So, um, so we're just using the red common brick. And uh, so I just put it around and uh, you know, put some cob around the outside edges to kind of lock those into place. And then uh, just put some sand in the middle. And if you have a mallet, great. But you can also just kind of pound these down, you know, just with your hand. That's, that's fine. So now, um, so this is great. This is about you know, four feet across. And um, so now we uh, we have this form that the man behind the camera made. And so the, you see how we did this. We just got you know these two pieces of plywood. Cut those into an arch and then got like um, eight or nine inch um, strips of wood and put those in between and then uh, screwed the plywoods to the wood so this is kind of your classic roman arch form kind of thing and so this will be like the doorway okay. and so now we're ready to pretty much start putting our bricks down all right so i'll just show you kind of how i do that so this is our clay slip, right? So this is our glue. Put that down first. Get a little bit of cob, basically a mortar. Put that down. And then get a brick. Take a brick and dip it in clay. And then just set it, set it down on there. All right, and then just kind of set it to the form. I shall probably get a piece of paper and put that over here so when we take this out, it, it slides out easily, right? And then we're going to be putting a chimney in, and then that'll be going um, right here in the center. Uh, when, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So, and then um, to have the bricks kind of tilt forward, we're going to show you quickly how I do that. So, we put, we put our mortar on, and then get a brick. I'm just going to use these bricks here, the holy ones, and take these, put that there, and then I get a rock. You see, I just get like a rock here and put that on the outside just to kind of wedge wedge that to tilt it forward, right? And so now it's it's pressing up nice snug against the arch and um, and then we'll just con continue that, right? So we'll put mortar here, do that. And so that'll this will be the, uh, this is how we do the, uh, the doorway, okay? And then uh, we can then take this out. So, all right. Okay, so now we're about to start the exciting phase of doing our actual dome for the oven, okay? So, of course, there's a couple ways of doing a cob oven. Uh, most cob ovens, at this point, you would make a sand mold, right? So you get some sand, you make a, a mold, usually about 16 inches high and like 30 or so inches wide, and, you know, and kind of maybe add a little bit of uh, clay to the sand so it compacts well. And then you put your wet cob mix, your sand clay straw mix, over that. A very dense cob mix over that. Let that dry for a few days. And then take out your sand mold. And then do slow cures. And, um, and that's, that's the classic way of doing a cob oven. We're going to be doing kind of more of a brick oven. Um, using clay bricks. 
Um, if you are able to make adobe bricks, that's great. I, I also do that. Like I, I do kind of trapezoid shaped adobe bricks and I form the bricks into a dome. And uh, so it's kind of a combination of a cob and adobe. So I call it a cobby. <laughs> So, um, so this is kind of the technique. So I like to have the inside diameter of the oven about 32 inches across. If, you, if it's about 32, then you can cook a good, you know, three pizzas at a time or so, and it's, it's a good size. And so at about 16 inches high, right? So we made the, the door frame, the door opening, 10 inches high, and we're going to make the, the height of the hearth about 16 inches high. So this, this height here will be about... 63% of the height of the hearth, and that's to allow the right amount of oxygen to come in, to oxygenate the fire, and heat to go out, smoke to go out without losing too much heat through the front door. Okay, so that's kind of the golden ratio. So I find the center point, so when I'm putting my bricks down, I make sure that um, they're in the center, so there's a center line going down the, the middle, okay? And then I just, I need something to attach a string to, so I put a screw in there and I just use like a two and a half inch screw and just kind of put that in between the bricks right and then got some just regular string and tied the string around the screw and then uh, with the tape measure I just measured from here out to here and this is about we're going about 15 and a half you can go 16 inches you know and um, and so so this is kind of the, the size that the inside of the, the hearth will be okay so, and then, so it'll be about 32 inches across and about 16 inches high, you know, so it'll be, you know, and you don't, you don't want it to be too high because then you lose a lot of heat way up there. So basically what you're going to do is you just, you get your clay slip, you know, your clay glue, and you go ahead and start putting that around the perimeter where your bricks are going to go. And this is, you know, allows the, the cob to, to stick uh, to the surface, right, to the bricks. And then you take, a, you know, some nice glob of cob, and you just put it down on that ring, in that circle, right? And uh, so I just kind of do that. Oh, okay. And then... So I haven't told you about this. So with, when you do a brick oven, we actually take these bricks and we break them in half, right? So the break in half is just a simple, you know, hit it once or twice, and that, that breaks it, you know, in half, right? And so we're gonna be breaking all these bricks in half. And that's to allow us to actually create a, a radius, a, a tight radius. And it makes the bricks a little bit lighter too. So when you get to the top of the dome, you don't have too much weight of the bricks, you know, pulling down on it. So, and it doesn't have to be exact, you know, and I have the rough side facing out. So you take, take the bricks and just do a, a quick dip in the slip. If there's any rocks, in the, in the cob and the mortar, you can just kind of pluck those out. And so we have a little knot at the end of this uh, string. So we'll just take our bricks right to the end of that knot, okay? And just like that. And then we just continue along. And just make sure that the end of the brick follows the end of the knot, uh, of where we have, where you have it uh, marked. Thank you. And so we just kind of go around and then I'll show you the, the next course after this. So when the next course, so you understand, so you just kind of continue going around. Then the next course, I'll just show you how we do, how we do that. So you put some slip on the next course and I'm going to go ahead and use a full brick right here just so that, um, it is a, so it's, you want them, we want the bricks to be kind of bricklayer style, you know, so it's like overlapping like that. Or I might even just like cut some, um, break some of it off. Like that. 
So like, like this is actually better. So I have it like that. And then I get a, a little piece of, if I have like some stones or even just some like little scrap piece of brick, you know, just like small little pieces of brick, I use those and I, I use the little pieces of stone or a little scrap brick to kind of tilt the brick forward, right? So now the second brick is tilting forward and this is like now touching the, uh, the, the top edge of that brick, right? You see? And so then it's going to continue. So the next one we do, it's going to be tilting forward and the top of that brick will be touching the end of the string here and just continue along. And we'll just put like little small little rocks or broken bricks or whatever on the outside edges to kind of tilt it forward, right? And then when we get towards the top, we'll just um, make the, the mortar, the cob mix, a little extra sticky. Put some extra clay in it to kind of hold them in position, right? So that's, that's pretty much it. And so the nice thing about this is that we could then, you know, pretty much, you know, like fire it up right away, right? We don't have to like let it cure for that long because it's essentially already cured. But then we will be, um, after, usually after about two courses, I'll just get a little bit of cob and I'll, I'll just smooth out the inside. I'll put like a quarter, half inch of cob on the inside of the brick, okay? So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So, and then on the outside of this, um, there'll be a, a space here, and then this, this is all going to be insulation. So tomorrow, um, then we, we put a coat of it, like four inches or so of insulation on the outside of this, right? We do an insulation coat, and that's going to retain the heat um, in the brick so we can make fires at night, and the next morning it'll still be warm for baking bread kind of thing. Right? Or cinnamon rolls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we can start uh, setting our bricks. So move, actually, yeah, Stephen, if you want to go ahead and just do a break, you know. All right, so making good progress on our brick oven here. So you see our technique. So we're uh, I think on our third course right now. So you just we just put a you know a little bit of glob of cob. I uh, don't really need much on the inside. You see how I'm mostly just putting it on the outside. And just kind of pressing it, pressing it down. And as long as the insides of the bricks are touching really tight and snug, it's really impossible for it to fall in. And then we have our little wedges, right? So we'll just take these wedges, kind of put it in that little gap back there. I encourage it to lean forward. And uh, and then um, yeah. And so so we make you see see this the consistency of the clay. We're starting to get a little bit uh, stickier, right? It, it's pretty dense too. And at first I was thinking, you know, dipping the the bricks in a clay slip would actually help it to stick to the clay, but I found that that was actually just causing the bricks to slide more. So we're not we're not doing that. We're just doing just just a dry brick and that's that's fine. All right. And so as we're going along, we're just having each course, each brick the top of each brick me uh, I'm going in a little bit too far in here so I'm gonna pull back so because it's a little bit too far in and that's okay yeah okay so we're making good progress on our dome oven here so you see where we're at now so we um, getting very close to the top we pretty much just have maybe two more courses to do so, so now we want to, so this is when the, the mix is really sticky. We use a really sticky uh, cob mix. Uh, actually, Gabby, can you give me a nice handful? Nice glob of cob, mm -hmm. just kind of set it here. So now we're going to take this, and actually, if you want to stand high so you can kind of look, get a good view down. So we just, you know, put it on the bricks around. And we can pretty much actually put it, actually, you guys want to go on, around here. The glob of cob. Yep, glob of cob. <laughs> Just put it in there. And then we can take our bricks that we have all ready to go and just start putting them in. All right, and just have it, have it the inside of the bricks will be touching really nice and snug. Snug as a bug and a rug and a hug. And yeah, and we're gonna press it in pretty good to the brick next to it. Okay. And we can kind of hold the bricks as we go, kind of thing. 
And we're just kind of working our way around. Mm -hmm. uh, here. Sorry, and work. that one, that one might work just perfectly, Hi. actually. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Okay, and now we can pretty much let go, and all the bricks are all supporting each other. All right, so the insides are all touching. So now we'll just kind of take a little bit of the cob, put it on the underside of these. All right. So I'll just wedge that in there. And there we go. Right. Beautiful. Yep. Yeah. And we got ourselves a dome. All right. Nice. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. What's that? Uh huh. And if we were to live in this, we can call it a dom domicile. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the whole point of insulation is you want a very lightweight material to retain the heat in the thermal mass layer in the first layer we just did. Because you want, when you have a fire in the oven, you want all that fire to stay in that first layer and not escape to the outside so that then you'd lose heat. So the idea behind this is you can make a fire at night and the next morning it'll still be warm for baking bread kind of thing, right? And so you can use a lot of different materials for making your insulation. I normally use perlite, you know, the white volcanic ash material, like a nice big bag of perlite, and usually one bag of pure 100% clay. It's normally what I use, and then I use a mud box. But if you don't have that, you can use the clay earth on your property, and you can use sawdust. Sawdust is a very lightweight material, so it's fluffy, right? So heat won't really transfer through the sawdust very much. Um, you can use vermiculite. You can use a really, really strawy cob mix. You may basically make a cob mix with a lot of straw. Um, but so, and then, so you basically just make a slurry of clay. So it's like this, kind of a clay milkshake kind of thing. So it's just like, you know, uh, yeah, very wet. And then you mix that. I, we added about two buckets of the clay slip to um, about, a, about a wheelbarrow full of the sawdust. So basically about 70% uh, sawdust to 30% clay, kind of the same ratio that a cob mix would be basically. So instead of sand, we're adding sawdust. So, so now you can just take, we take this, and now with this, will this be put over the oven, right? So we just take this and put this on a couple inches over the oven, right? And so, and we just finished our dome, right? If you're able to let this sit overnight, great. But it's not necessary, you know, the, once you have a fire in there, that'll dry all this out and everything. So we're just going to cover this whole oven up with, uh, you know, two or three inches of insulation going all the way around. Okay. Yeah. Press it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So we finished putting our layer of cob on the outside, just like half inch, inch of cob on the outside, outside the insulation. So now we can just let this all dry. And, uh, and then when it's dry, then uh, actually tomorrow actually it would be a good time to do the sculpting. Whatever decorative sculpting, I always like to let this set up and then we can kind of sculpt on top of that. So now we're thinking um, of doing something kind of interesting around the, the entryway, the doorway. So, you know, we had bricks there. So we just put a, you know, like a little half inch bed of cob. And I just I made this cob a little extra sticky, right? So it's just kind of a more, of it, more clay to give it a little extra stickiness. And then we got some uh, little stones down from the river, right? And so uh, for the cob, the stone to stick well to the cob, you can just put a little bit of the uh, clay slip on the back side, you know, it's kind of the glue, and then just embed it, embed it in there, right? Just kind of embed that right in. And then we can use the form that's still in there to help uh, support the weight of them. Right, and so uh, yeah, so that's the idea. So if you guys want to, you know, come and help with that, so we can just take take these, put a little bit of just a little love in your heart, <laughs> and, and then just kind of put it in there. And actually, we can kind of hover it, if we can, even hover it over the uh, the form. We might not have to have it to stick up. And this is a little thicker than these. Let's do the ones that are. A little bit thicker than that, so they, they kind of stick out a little bit more, a little more pronounced. Okay. Is the space for these? Yeah. yeah, yeah, And I like it how if it's oval shape, we'll have it kind of like going this way. Mm. So we have finished putting our stones around the oven. You know, I created this arch, right? So basically, I just you know put some wood 
four by four at an angle and, and then create this arch, put the stones around. And so we have a nice wood storage area down below. And so now we're pretty much ready to take out the uh, form for the door, All right? So, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to take, take this out. That. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so this is a, a great demonstration of what we can do with earth, this local earth. So, um, yay, Cobb. <laughs> yay! Yeah. Shout out to Eric behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is when we do us. the decorative stuff on it so while this is curing <laughs> Catherine's now putting in some crystals and some stones beautify it give it some character nice and I'd say it's pretty much complete we can uh, start cooking some pizzas now once we get a fire going in for about an hour yes Yay! <laughs> yeah, nice. So you let the fire burn for yeah. about an hour, uh -huh. and then that gets a hot hour. Okay, so we are now ready to start doing our plaster over the oven. So we've been letting our cob oven dry for, it's been a couple weeks now, and uh, so it's turned from dark gray to light gray, and um, there's a little area right here that doesn't have uh, direct sun, it's a little wet still, but we're doing a breathable plaster, so it should be fine. So uh, let me show you what we're doing. So we're doing a lime plaster. Really, your two options for plaster are a lime plaster um, or an earthen plaster. Okay. So um, I like to do lime plasters. I just find they're they're stronger. They protect it from the rain more. They're you know more water resistant, and um, and you can you know make them different colors and things. And so we're doing a lime. We're using a, a hydraulic lime. This is the bag hydraulic lime, pure natural hydraulic lime on the back. Here it says use since 30 BC, right? So this is like what the ancient Romans were using. Um, so there's, I get this from a company called Transmineral. This is NHL 2. There's 2 is 3.5 and 5. I like working with 2 just because it doesn't set up quite so fast. You have more working time. And um, so basically it's, uh, it's about two and a half to three parts sand to one part lime. Okay. So I'm going to first do a lime wash over it. So basically it's just lime and water. So I put some of that on the cob. And then this one just gives the, uh, uh, the plaster a surface that it recognizes. It'll recognize the lime uh, in here and we'll want to stick to it. So I'll just, you know, coat an area about, about that big and then I'll just take a nice handful of the plaster and just put it on with my hands, right? And I'll just, you know, put it on about a quarter inch thick or so and I'm kind of hovering over it, kind of going very uh, gently, hovering over about a quarter inch. So I'm not going too thin, not going too thick. Uh, and then, and I can also then use a trowel too. You know, take my trowel and smooth it out with the trowel. And sometimes a trowel will leave marks, you know, and so I can also take a little yogurt lid, you know, kind of thing, and then just kind of smooth it out some more, right? Here. So we just finished plastering it. We did our lime plaster with a nice oxide in it. And um, so it's all plastered. Now we're just going to let this dry for, you know, probably a couple weeks it'll take for the lime plaster to completely dry. And then, um, and so then, then if you have a roof on it, great. If, if you're not going to have a roof, then you can then put a linseed oil sealer. It's usually about like, you do like three parts linseed oil, one part thinner. You know, thinner is so it penetrates into the plaster well. And you need to add an oxide into the sealer because the reaction that sealer has to lime is it dries kind of splotchy. So you need to add some, some iron oxide. So I left some oxide here with Catherine. And um, so yeah, and the more you use it, the better, stronger it gets too. 
and this is a door, you know, so this is a door that um, Stephen actually made. Um, you can just put aluminum foil on the inside, and, um, and so you can do your, your baking, you know, with a nice door in there uh, to retain the heat. And, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so it's pretty much done um, for, for now and um, ready, ready to use. So. Well, thank you. We've actually cooked a couple meals on it already, and Yay. we've loved it. And Great. Working with you has been really educational, and you like you make it look so easy, and you make it look so beautiful. So thank you. Uh huh. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, rocking. So thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed this instructional video, and I hope that you are inspired to go out and build your own oven, because every neighborhood needs a oven. Yay. Sounds great. Yeah. Cool. <laughs>